Welcome to the Dog Classroom. The Dog Classroom Podcast. I am your co-host, Anne-Marie. And I'm your co-host, Amelia. Like and subscribe on Spotify and YouTube in video format. And now into the episode. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Dog Classroom Podcast. This week, we're going to talk about reactive dogs slash fearful dogs. And um, I wanted to start because this is actually a topic where... um, Anne-Marie is sort of known as the expert or the specialist in reactive dogs in our area. And um, it's something that you have built a program around. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about that before we get into necessarily talking about um, reactive dogs in general. Like why? Why why? did you start it? And, you know, what, what is it now? Okay, so normally I do a little bit of a spiel too before the reactive dog seminar because I like people to understand um, where I like where I came from and why this was created. It's Mm -hmm. not something I just decided to do, you know, read a book and here we go, right? Um, Definitely doesn't work that way. I think it takes a lot of experience, a lot of patience. Um, Time is huge. You Mm -hmm. know that already in in being um, a trainer of mine and just how things go. So I originally started this as a friend suggested, um, you know, that they didn't have anywhere to work with their dog that I don't want to say had special needs, but just had different needs of say the group class, yeah, that sort of thing. And then it's also when started doing behavior consults, which I felt there was no where for anybody to go in town that was training like positive reinforcement. Right. And uh, with this issue, so it was more about giving these people like almost a group or like a community together Mm -hmm. where a few of them would come together and then we would train because they were having the same issues. I think the tricky thing about reactive and fearful dogs is a lot of people think it was their fault or that there's no one else out there like them. It can be isolating. Yeah. It can. Yeah. And so um, basically you're saying like it started as a little community and now it's grown into a a bit of a class or a program that yeah that yeah you for to sure because I think there's a lot more people going oh okay others experience this and a lot of times there is something you can do and they're mm-hmm. they're willing to take the time it's always super cool in seeing people go through the program and then have successes and continue yeah. to have successes right so you know yes and in, in starting all this and um working with those people a lot of it is about education it's about understanding how dogs learn Mm -hmm. it's about observing body language it's about not setting unrealistic expectations it's allowing the dog to set the pace yeah so um i explained to them it's as much um they need as much training if not more than the dog because we have joked in the past a little bit that you know as soon as people I don't want to say have more than they can deal with, but a lot of people get overwhelmed very quickly and just want to sort of pass it off um, to somebody else. But the tricky thing a lot of times is they more than likely are part of a bit of the issue. Right. And I know we talked about earlier, um, like we offer board and train as one of our sort of separate services, but we don't do it for reactive well right for just for that purpose right yeah. so we don't offer a board and train for aggressive dogs or reactive dogs because um the human needs to be involved in that right like it's yeah. one thing for the dog to come and you know hang out at your house and then they're they're behaving perfectly for you and then right. the owner comes home and and it's just a completely different situation so it's it's not only for the dogs right your program it's also for the humans. yeah but i think honestly in doing this for so long um, it's like second nature to me, to the handling skills, but it's also understanding how the dogs learn and right. know how to redirect that. And I'm really trying to, and I think I do it almost daily, is educating, <laughs> Yeah, right? It's about educating the people and go, okay, we just need to break it down. We just need to take some steps. And it's about learning on both. And the thing is, you know, we've made a commitment to this animal. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody, I don't think, asks that 
you know, that they want a problem child, <laughs> right? That it, it just sort of seems to happen. And for some reason, you know, you were brought together and, you know, we're just going to sort of go from there. Yep. And I tell people is we're, we're not going to spend our energy on, on wondering why. Right. Or what happened. We're going to spend the energy on making it better. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's a good way to sort of sum it up. Um, And then as we go into this, people can also keep in mind that you offer the Reactive Dog Seminar, which is, well, webinar now. It's online, right? So it's on Zoom. That's the prerequisite to take your class because you don't want them just sort of coming in and and feeling overwhelmed with everything. Right. So I just want to jump in and just explain the seminar for two seconds is reason why we started it actually was covid right we were just trying to get the information out there it I think was online st- right um we started it in person before covid yeah you're right can you think back that long oh um my gosh. because i remember what happened and i'll jump in on this story okay, jump in. this was both of us as you were getting almost burnt out from how many reactive dog right. consults there were so instead of doing 20 consults with 20 different people and and trying to give them the same information just to because it's all i mean when you're starting right we're going to talk about it a little bit today there's a lot of the foundations that are going to be the same right regardless of what the issue is right so instead of doing that right we could have those 20 people come and be right. together and learn with us and ask questions and and be part of that group. Right. So, so you're right. I, I did forget about that part because I think I'm more focused on now that we do it on, we are continuously doing it online, but I'm going to comment on, we can comment on that part too, but thanks for reminding me about that. But yeah, and, and that's why we started it. And I've actually found it extremely helpful. And I think people are retaining more because they're not they don't have the dog with them. They're not preoccupied about what the dog is doing. What Mm -hmm. are they sniffing? Are they over here? They're actually able to sit back, listen and watch. And I find their house. Yeah, exactly. And I find, so what we do is yes, we have PowerPoint slides. Mm -hmm. We have lots of pictures of body language. So we're trying videos. Exactly. We're trying to take them back. The videos are actually showing some of the exercises that we're encouraging them to do and somewhat the outcome. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So you're able to, and I know I learn way better through like visual and hands on. So mm-hmm. it's about showing those steps. And I find then when I see those people come to reactive classes or come to a consult, they already have that thought process that then we can continue to build on. So we've put that information and given that information to them. And then we start to build it. So I've actually found um, the seminar quite helpful. I know it at times applies to different people. Like sometimes people will just take the seminar and say, thank you very much. And they might be dealing with a smaller issue. Mm -hmm. Um, And some people want to continue and, you know, do reactive classes. So when we're saying reactive classes is we're trying to set up the same situations that would happen in everyday life, because we're not saying to these people, you, your dog will now live in the backyard. Right. So we're doing the whole desensitization, trying to get them out into the community. And um, I think too, while while we're on the topic of reactive class is that it's not like your average group class. It is not, we're taking, you know, these five reactive dogs who don't want to be around other dogs and people and shoving them in a room and making them do sit stays. Because the the feedback I get is people say that they don't want to come because there's other reactive dogs there and it'll make their dog more reactive. Or that they're scared, right? I don't yeah. want to handle my dog around other dogs. The way that it's set up and I mean, I can say this because I've been part of it. That's how yeah. I came to the dog classroom was through reactive class is that um, you're at a distance where you're, everything is, is well controlled. Everything is safe. Everything yeah. is um, comfortable and you and your assistants are there to sort of walk everybody through everything. So you don't have to go up close to somebody in order to, you know, you don't have to walk to the front of the room and pass all the dogs to get to the instructor. Like you're moving around and you're helping everybody out. Um, so that the environment is is sort of safe, safe, controlled. Yeah. It's outside. It's outside. Yep. And yep. that's why we until we, they graduate to inside, which is nice. Yes. And and honestly, some of them some of them get there. But again, in being seasonal where we live yeah. in Thunder Bay, um, obviously, when it's minus 30 and owners are freezing and dogs don't want to walk, well, then we just sort of regroup and do possibly stuff online. 
but then we're out there again you know hopefully we get a good eight months in um to be outside which is where the majority of the issues are because we like to be social with the dogs we want to walk them and take them places so you know that seminar gives them those aha moments and then we work on the technique okay yeah so now i want to get into sort of like what is a reactive dog i know i said fearful and reactive dogs and the reason why i said that is because i think when you see an outright sort of um fearful dog and you see a dog that's tail is tucked and they're maybe hiding in a corner and they're they're timid and they're shut down you you tend to see that as a scared dog right and you almost respect yes that dog is scared yeah when you see a reactive dog people don't feel that way they feel that dog is bad or that dog is aggressive they don't feel that dog is scared whereas from our experience a lot of the time reactivity is fear-based right yes So when we're talking fearful and reactive dogs, we're not necessarily talking about the dog that's scared and shaking in the corner. We're talking more about the dogs who display their fear through trying to make that thing go away. Yeah, so in exhibiting um, body language that is trying to scare away the the other dog or person, if what we're talking about. And the reason why we say reactive, and I think um, the term aggression is thrown around a little bit too much. Um, I usually say to people, um, I never label a dog aggressive, um, even possibly reactive until I've worked with them a little bit and I describe the behaviors that are happening. And I think, you know, when a dog barks and lunge or has that scary bark is right away they're labeled aggressive. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there's more to it than that. I say aggressive dogs actually make contact. The majority of them do not. Yeah. Um, but what Amelia is talking about a little bit, and I, I say to people, a true aggressive dog doesn't hide any of the behavior, right? right. They're just going to go at you. But when you have an actual fear, yeah. aggressive dog, they can mm-hmm. be unpredictable based on the situations they're put in. Right. So it's about educating the owner to not have those dogs put in the situations where they feel like they have to self-protect. So let's talk about some of the body language okay. that we might see, um, because we're not talking about, you know, necessarily tail tucked running away. We're seeing more going maybe toward yeah. the thing. We're seeing some lunging, so so throwing their body sort of toward the person or dog. We're seeing um, a lot of like high tails, maybe wagging tails. Right. And then remembering, too, that a high wagging tail is not friendly. Exactly. Right. It's more mediocre. Seeing a lot more lip licking. So Mm -hmm. honestly, it does look like the dog is licking their lips. And the tricky thing is a lot of people don't see it because the dog's in front. Yeah. Right. So it it makes it a little more tricky. All they see is the wagging tail. And they All go, they oh, see is friendly. the wagging tail. But honestly, a lot of times it's it's that stiffness. Um, it was rather interesting. Is I worked with another dog this week. Worked with a few this week, and this dog was approaching um, Molly, the the fake dog. Oh. And um, you know, walking, walking. As she got closer, she slowed down. Mm -hmm. and was hesitating because you could see the anxiety and fear building. So at that point, I had the owner redirect the dog. Mm -hmm. Um, So you're seeing behavior such as that, ears back, large pupils, um, but definitely that rigid body. Um, The bark, you know, we did that barking episode, which I, you know, think we need to put all over social media. (laughs) I think we have to go back to Facebook because Amelia got some awesome um sound footage thanks to our clients yes <laughs> um and you know actually it's super cool how much the the clients participate with amelia because i honestly say any type of picture or sound and stuff you need <laughs> you guys are like awesome at, at sending your stuff um and then you know again to be proud of when you look at our website those are our clients yes dogs right so it goes to show all the the different types and energies and breeds and and all that that we have so as a little aside, but, you know, honestly, for for the fearful dog, and I think fearful is a large category, we can go to not socialized Mm -hmm. in being um, put in different environments. Okay, so we can talk about environments. And then honestly, 
The other thing is um, a lot of them lack socialization on leash. They've never been on a leash. Yes. Right. And as soon as we put that six foot leash on them, they look to us and and they can't do the fight or flight. Right. Well, ideally, we'd want them to do the flight, but you know, <laughs> yeah, but they can't. So they're, they're looking up to the owner. And so that's why it's about training the owner because now the dog is stuck Yes, on that, on that six foot leash. So we yeah. need to know how to make them comfortable and assist them in working through. So, and, and recognize that they're just not being mean or bad or, or bad or angry the labels, right? Yeah. I always try to say, don't label the dog as, you know, reactive, aggressive, whatever, right away. But tell us about, like, what behaviors are you seeing? Because I'll get clients who say, oh, my dog is aggressive. And then I say, well, what does that look like? And, and I then, think because so many people throw that term around, I really think it's, it's, I do the same thing. I, I want to know exactly what they think yeah. is aggressive. And then even with you saying that is, you know, worked with this shepherd and, um, you know, she was told that this this dog was aggressive by other trainers. And then she came and he's like our Tarzan dog, you know, yeah. how we would talk a little bit. And basically this dog has so much energy and, you know, doesn't have the greatest walking skills and that sort of thing. But the dog is uncomfortable mm -hmm. with greeting on leash or doesn't know how to do it because the owner felt it so overwhelming that now the dog is walked late at night or off leash. Yeah. Right? So it's Just not- to get rid of the problem. Exactly. So it's not having that experience of seeing them every day. So I, I think with the fear part, there's a lot of other little factors in yes. that we can address. There's so much nuance to behavior yeah. that I think it's way more than we could get into in a podcast. It's way more than the, we could get into in one webinar. But I think we're just trying to say when we're talking about reactive dogs in this episode, it's not, um, you know, this like frothing at the mouth, like trying to eat people sort of dog. It can be my dog, right? I have a reactive dog. You've had reactive dogs. Yeah. We know what it's like. And um, we know that sometimes it can be, like you said, isolating where you go. Okay. Um, my dog is bad and and that's what you're led to think because maybe that's what a trainer has told you or maybe that's what you've you've found just from society but going to the people aspect of it because i think a lot of what we do is teaching the human half of that relationship mm -hmm. um so why would you say that it would be so important for the human to be present for this why can't we just take them for board and train and, and fix them Right. And in stating that a little bit at the beginning is because, you know, I've I've done this for a while. I can almost anticipate how the dog will react or what will happen. And yes, I have the skills that I have worked on for mm -hmm. long periods of time, many years. And chances are I am more efficient. Mm -hmm. But that's that's why I teach. I want to share my skills. So the thing is with me taking your dog in, the other thing you have to remember is um, there's a bonding territorial component with right. you and your dog. You know, when I say to people when they first get a dog, whether it's a puppy or an adult, there's a honeymoon period. Right. Right. Three to four weeks ish. Yeah. Right. And then you get the true personality of the dog and then they're bonded. Then they recognize you as OK. So you're my guardian in the household and this is my household and that does actually trigger some of the behavior right right because now we're adding so under our fearful line we're also adding that some dogs are protective territorial of the owner insecure right? insecure there you go so um that's why i ask owners that sometimes you know they need to do a little more on walks than just follow the dog yeah right they need to do the u-turns and say oh let's go check this out and come here and be a little bit more interactive because um i don't want to say we don't want to allow that territorial part but that's ideally why we need the owners working with us because they can do things to help the situation. And that's what the program is all about, is teaching them how to do those yeah. things, right? But there's there's a layer of trust. Yeah. There's... Um, Relationship building. The quote that we were trying to think of earlier that... I, Did you remember it? I believe it's that you... It was a quote that we were trying to think of that was um, basically saying you can't outsource your relationship with your dog. So you can't hire us to fix your, you know, to, to do something to that relationship. That's between you and your dog. Um, we could do that 
right? I could I could have a relationship with this dog. You could have a relationship with this dog. But it's going to be same. different than what the owner's relationship is exactly. with the dog. So in a way, we're it's the... Both of them that need to do the work. Exactly. We're the therapist trainer helping you to work that relationship yes. with the dog. Yeah. And so in having that bond and having that trust, then the person is understanding the dog more and then the dog is therefore going to respond better with yeah. their person. Yeah. Um, so there's lots that goes into training a reactive dog. It's not just something that you can say, hey, take this and fix it in two weeks. And, yeah, yeah. Um, and the other thing is, you know, our relationship with the dog is different, mm -hmm. you know, and, and people joke a little bit in classes that they always take treats from us and, and that yeah. sort of thing. But we see them, you know, once a week and they have fun. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so even with reactive dogs, we're there and we're still a neutral party. Mm -hmm. Like that's our relationship is sort of, you know, dog and, and trainer or dog or walker and they're less emotional about us. Yeah. Yeah. And so when we're thinking about the fearful dogs, the reactive dogs, and they're they're looking for, you know, people are looking for help. Yeah. Um, most of the time, I would say, you know, they're going to start with probably a behavior consult, a private lesson. Yep. Um, if not, then chances are they're going to do the seminar, the webinar, right? Yeah. So I usually say to people is, and we record it, yes. right? So, you know, even though we do offer them, you know, um, monthly, bi-monthly, or every two months, is um, I offer a seminar plus or minus consult. Some people like to just go with the seminar first. Some people like to do the consult. Some people like to do both. And then once I've met you and, and see the handling skills and, you know, we sort of go through the paces and practice different exercises, then we create a plan together. It, yes. It's not... Uh, me approaching it as every dog and handler is the same. Mm -hmm. It's it's creating something th together that they feel comfortable with, that I feel comfortable with, and that the dog will be comfortable with. Exactly. It's important to take the dog's comfort yep. into, Absolutely. <laughs> into consideration because there's, so there's, oh, getting into the nuance a little bit, but there's frustrated greeters, right? Yep. And those are not dogs who want you to go away. Those are just dogs who have just no social skills and they just throw themselves or anxious they just yeah. sort of start reacting when they see a dog or a person that's going to be a little different than a dog who is absolutely terrified once they start to approach a person or a dog so there's little nuances in there that you make sure that the dog is comfortable you make sure that the person is comfortable and that everybody is sort of comfortable and happy with the plan right and so yeah. i think that's the good thing about the way that your program is set up that it's it's all those little pieces and mm -hmm. then people can sort of make their own sort of um, either online or in person or consult or all of it, right? And taking the class and doing all that and sort of customize that to, yeah. to what they need. To what they need for sure. And, you know, some people want to go to camp with them. Some people are happy walking around the neighborhood. Some people, you know, um, like to hike in the bush. So it, it honestly depends. But by by... What I'm actually doing is, you know, I'm looking at the owner skills, but I'm looking at this um, innocent animal mm -hmm. that has possibly put in a situation. Um, and then I'm looking at trying to how do I build the confidence and deal with the anxiety part to get that dog more comfortable in that situation. So again, yeah. it's about accepting that the dog is there, not necessarily, you know, spending hours or minutes um, figuring out how it got there, but that's the tricky thing. It's there and we need to work with it. But I think the other point to really stress, and I know Amelia feels the same thing. And obviously you can tell, I think with us talking about this, that we're quite passionate and yeah. like, she's joking that we could do half an hour. We could sit here for three hours and do this. Um, maybe we'll sit down and do that one day. The other thing is we also have various other people that would join in. So yeah, you know, just to a very quick aside is one of our trainers, Siobhan, you know, I joke that I've met all my trainers or my dog people through a little bit of training and staff with class. the same thing. I met her through reactive class. Alicia. Alicia through reactive <laughs> class. But it's, it's, I think the reason why we connect is the understanding component, the, yeah. the need to want to help it and the need to understand that you can help it. Yeah. 
and make it better. And and the thing is not just saying, you know, that's a reactive or aggressive dog. The thing is actually breaking it apart and getting that dog to have successful moments, whether depending upon what they are, but not saying the dog should be like this. Yes. You know, the dog should be able to walk around Boulevard on a Saturday. Like, that's not fair. So I think for people, there's a, a level of compromise, but there's also a level of understanding that we've domesticated these animals and that there are, um, I don't want to say quirks to them. We all have quirks, but there's things to They're do to help. They're individuals. And we <laughs> and have to appreciate that and not yes. just try to make them into the, the perfect thing we want. Exactly. Yeah. So I have two things that I want to say. Okay. One of them is it is not all in how you raise them. <laughs> and yes. that's important okay. because yeah. I always, always hear people go, you know, dogs are only aggressive if you make them aggressive. And if you don't have a reactive dog, you don't realize how hurtful that is to somebody who does. Yeah. And um, I also have said, you know, if that's the case, then there would be no good rescue dogs. Rescue yeah. dogs come from some pretty bad situations sometimes, and it's not all in how they're raised. So I think that's one important thing I want people yeah. to know. The other important thing that I want people, if they've made it this far and they do not have a reactive dog, <laughs> to know is that you can help. Yeah. You can help people with oh, reactive dogs. Oh, I see dogs. where you're going, yes. So Anne-Marie did a wonderful um, article in the paper yes. about how you can help reactive dogs in your community. And we got a really fantastic response. We did, yeah. Because so many people and every reactive dog person has heard, it's okay, he's friendly. And what we want to get out there is that it is not okay that he's friendly um my dog needs some space so the best thing you can possibly do is if you see somebody struggling help them by going away giving them room help them by giving them room help them by leashing your dog help them by not approaching and saying it's okay dogs love me so what amelia is saying just to back up two seconds is that unfortunately you know and i'm an off-leash walker too but there are places for off-leash dogs mm -hmm. and there are places for leash dogs so us reactive dog owners when we go to le places where they should be leashed it's extremely frustrating when there's other dogs off leash running towards us mm -hmm. and the owner is saying oh but my dog's friendly and we're standing there with our reactive dog on leash going oh not again yeah, because yeah. you never know what's going to happen. You never know if your friendly dog is going to make someone's dog reactive because of that scary experience of being run at. There's so many things that people who don't have reactive dogs can do that can help those of us who do have reactive dogs out. So just, just by sort of keeping an open mind and not saying, oh, you raised that dog to be bad, um, there's stuff that you can do to help out your community. Um, and I just want to finish off with if you do have a reactive dog, there's also things you can do. So you can contact yeah. Anne-Marie, you can get in on that seminar, you can get in on the class. Yeah, and I think the, the other point is to understand that um, the owners aren't th the bad people. They didn't cause the dog to be like this. Yes. Right? So it's about the owner should actually be praised yes. for working with this dog because it's extremely emotional. If you see a muzzled dog, say thank you for keeping us safe and yeah. helping your dog yeah. and working with your yeah. dog. Right? But, you know, same thing is if I see a dog, you know, barking or lunging or whatever, trust me, I'm the first one to turn around. Um, I'll go to boat it just to support those people. So in to summarize, mm -hmm. I'm going to summarize us here. So um, think about um, how you can help your dog like i said instead of dwelling on my dog is like this like this like this and small baby steps mm -hmm. look at the little things the small wins are amazing. small wins are amazing um and there's help out there and we want to help you we're passionate about it and um yeah please get in touch or the other thing is to help out by you know just like amelia said keeping your dogs on leash um, but then also is education, you know, pass some of the things and suggestions we've made, even if, you know, you have a great relationship with your dog, well, pass them along. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. Thank you for tuning in and sticking with us through this passionate, uh, passionate episode. episode. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Thank you.